Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 6, 2022, around 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this evening, including the latest hurricane threat ongoing in the Caribbean. So it's going to jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this evening as the sun begins to set out there, we notice we have two systems out there. We have Tropical Depression 12, which is likely on its final stages of its life cycle in a tropical cyclone. And then we have potential tropical cyclone 13, which is now located in the Southern Caribbean at this time, moving towards portions of Central America. If we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery for this particular system, we notice that it is still disorganized and any low level circulation is actually probably over land at this point over the Northern coast of South America. So this land interaction is likely to hinder significant development for the next several days as this moves towards the west similar evolution to bonnie eventually this will emerge back over water where additional development is likely if you look at the system's track forecast here we notice that this is expected to become a tropical storm sometime by friday and then as this begins to approach the coast here this is rapidly intensifying and is likely to be our season's next hurricane with sustained winds now estimated to peak at 80 miles per hour as this approaches the coast here and then moves inland close to Guatemala City as a tropical storm and then weakening into a tropical depression here within the next five days. And we notice that this is almost exclusively going to be a threat down here for Central America. So for those folks now in Central America, of course, now it is time to go over your hurricane preparedness plans Again, hurricane conditions are likely to begin sometime late Saturday into early Sunday morning and lasting through the day and then diminishing once we get into late Sunday and into early Monday morning. Now, if we take a look at how the strong the storm is expected to get over the next couple of days, we'll look at the H4 forecast. This is the 12Z run valve for 11 a.m. this morning. We're looking at the 200 millibar wind pattern. So this is the upper level environment, uh, the upper level winds at about 39,000 feet. We notice that what we're dealing with right now is a storm that's still battling a little bit of shear and of course its proximity right now to land. We notice this big upper level low right here. There's kind of a secondary upper level low that's kind of scattered throughout here. So a little bit of shear over top of our system, but we notice that it is expected to weaken over the next couple of days. And then our storm tries to align itself under those deep easternlies and that upper level anticyclone. And this is when we begin to see significant intensification with our storm. If we look at the relative humidity product, we notice that there is going to be just a smidge of dry mid-level air out here. And what this might do is similar to Ian, this might actually allow for some dry air entrainments to occur from time to time. Very similar to what happened with Ian, because remember, Ian was expected to become a Category 4 out here instead of become a Category 4 right near land near Florida. So something to watch over the next several days that could hinder some significant development but here, regardless, this does continue on. And by Sunday morning, we're looking at a strengthening hurricane all the way up until landfall. And on this particular run of the H Wharf, it has near major hurricane intensity as this crashes into uh, places like Nicaragua and Honduras and the coast there of Central America. Again, that upper level environment and the mid level uh, relative humidity at that point does become a little bit more favorable over the next few days for additional intensification. So this is going to be something to monitor for those areas very closely. Again, a hurricane threat seems to be increasing for those areas sometime as we head into this weekend. Impacts will likely begin as early as Saturday and then continue to spread inland. And then of course here, the H wharf tries to sneak this in very close to Belize there as well. So it is going to be something to monitor Look at the latest track forecast here. We notice that most of the computer models do have this kind of going into that coast of Central America there, close to Nicaragua and Honduras, eventually continuing into Guatemala City. We've seen a little bit of a northward shift in the guidance today, but nothing that indicates a significant threat to the Gulf of Mexico or portions of the northern Yucatan Peninsula or Cuba. Let me reiterate that there does not seem to be any substantial threat right now to the Gulf of Mexico or of Florida or the Yucatan Peninsula at this particular point, especially the northern tip. Again, there is no threat that I am seeing as of right now, but do continue to check back on the forecasts. But it seems like that we are in, within about 72 hours of this making landfall, and it seems like the environment is going to cooperate this time, unlike Ian. All right. 
So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I know this is a little bit short. Sorry about that. We'll have a full video uh, suite out there by tomorrow. All right. So have a good rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.